Okay, so welcome to day 12. We're going to, today we're continuing the customization and configuration series. And in this specific uh, series is a follow up to the previous one, which was on day 11, where we spoke about uh, the different types of fields that you can create within CRM. Uh, in this specific one, I'm going to continue with fields, but I'm going to be focusing mainly on calculated fields, roll up fields, and basically different calculation methods that you can have. I'm also going to touch a little bit on business rules to show you that you can also do calculations using business rules, but it follows a different sort of a logical pattern. Okay, so let's get right into it. All right, so let's first discuss calculated fields. Calculated fields have a trigger. So a trigger meaning when do they actually execute the calculation. So for example, if I have a form that has two values, uh, let's say field A and field B, and when I fill in a number in each of those fields, and I want to populate a result in a calculated field, it will not calculate immediately. It will only calculate on save or on load. So on save meaning when the user clicks on save, the calculation executes. And on load means when the form actually loads, then the calculation will actually run. All right, so the pros of this, it's really, really simple to implement. It's very easy to do it's very simple math as well as complicated math. I'm going to show you both doing calculations with whole numbers, uh, decimal numbers, a mixture of whole number and decimal numbers as well as currency, and also um, um, how to do nested calculations or apply bod mass rules. The cons, however, is that the calculation will not calculate until the record is actually saved. So depending on your circumstance or depending on your requirement, you may want to uh, consider different methods. And I'm going to show you two. I'm going to show you how to use calculated fields, roll-up fields, as well as using business rules in case you need to be able to do a calculation that you need an answer before you actually save the record, depending on what your requirement is. All right, so let's continue. Calculated fields. I'm going to do basic multiplication. Um, I'm going to use uh, nested formulas. I'm also going to show you roll-up fields. Now, what is a roll-up field? A roll-up field is when I want to get a total sum of all the related record values. So imagine, for example, you've got a job card, and underneath that job card you have timesheets, and those timesheets have a number of hours. So if I wanted on the main job card to, to calculate the sum of all the hours that have been worked thus far on the, on the job, um, I would use a roll-up field to do that. Okay, then uh, with regards to uh, calculation using business rules, it's a very interesting one because I can do calculations. I cannot do very advanced calculations. I can do basic math, but the basic math actually calculates instantly, which is quite a nice feature to have. Okay. All right, so this is the data structure we're going to follow. <coughs> this is referred to as one to many. So we say one sample entity and many um, child records. Okay, so when we, when we refer to that, I'm saying sample, let's say this is a job card, and these are the time entries connected to that job card. So something that's very important yet to remember is that we have one parent entity and many child entities, and each child entity is connected directly back to the parent. All right, this is going to come in handy, especially when we do roll-ups, because the roll-up is going to take, we're going to place a field on the sample, fetch a value from each record, and give us a total on the sample. All right, but you'll see this in practice as I, as I go through the demonstration. So let's get right into it. <coughs> I've uh, got my solution open here. We haven't created any entities yet and we're going to follow the data structure. So let's start off by creating a brand new entity, and we're going to call this new entity sample. All right, so we click on entities over here. We just wait for it to load. And once it's finished loading, I'm going to click on new, and then give it a name. So we're going to give it a name of sample, uh, plural name, samples. All right, and then I need to choose where on the sitemap I want it to appear. So I'm going to choose sales all right is there any other components i need uh, for example do i want to allow quick create do i want to enable auditing any field security i can go do that i can also go define the ownership over here organization or user or team all right so if, if, if this not making sense go back watch a couple of other vi videos with regards to the customization and configuration uh, in terms of setting up an, an actual entity all right now that this is done we've set up the basics over here what I want to do is I want to go and change the primary field. So by default, whenever you create a new entity, the primary field's name is always name. And I don't, I don't want, in this case, because it's a, a, jar, it's a sample, I'm just going to change this to, uh, to description. So it's something a little bit more meaningful. Especially when you see, when we put it into practice, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so there we go. I'm happy with that. We've configured it. We've placed it where we want. Um, 
we don't need anything else. This is a pretty straightforward, simple entity. All right, so I'm going to click on Save. So what I'm doing is I'm actually creating an entity to create all the calculation methods within one entity. So we're going to do it step by step, and I'm going to show you actually how to do that. Okay, I'm just going to click on Save and Close. I notice we get that pop-up error now and then, but I'm just going to ignore it. Okay, and let's close it. Let's go and see if our entity actually created. I'm just going to save and and refresh over here. <coughs> nope. Okay. Let's go again and let's go select entity. Let's go try that one more time. Um, let's go and call this uh, calculation samples and then plural name samples. Okay. We want it to appear in the sales entity. The ownership, we set it to organization. And there we go. All of that is pretty fine. We don't need any special settings as it's just very 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 simple okay and I suspect I know what's wrong is this logical name over here was a duplicate of a previous record so let's just give it something a a little bit more unique so I'm gonna say sample description okay so this logical name has to be unique only to this record and cannot be duplicated throughout any other entity All right. and there we go we can click on save and then our entity should create without issue Let's give it a couple of seconds to create, and in this process while it's creating, it's building the core forms that are needed in terms of the main forms and so forth. It's putting together some basic views. There it won't create any charts. There'll be a core set of fields that'll be created uh, automatically for you. There won't be any relationships yet because we'll, we'll go and do that configuration uh, shortly. And let's just give it a moment to actually publish, and as soon as it's finished creating, uh, this di this box message box will go away and then we're ready okay so there we go our entity set up and we can actually start the next phase okay first thing i'm going to go to the form <coughs> and we're going to be using the main form over here so let's click on the main form okay so generally speaking is generally speaking before you go ahead and create the fields you'd normally plan it first and then uh, on what fields you're going to use, what types you, what types of fields, what data types, the minimum and maximum values, and so forth. In this instance, I'm going to create them one by one slowly, and I'm going to go through it. <coughs> you can either create your solutions, uh, your fields directly on the form, or you can actually go into your uh, solution over here, click on fields, and go and create all the fields that you want one shot. All right. But because this is a, an ABC lesson, I'm going to take it really slow and show you step by step how we actually do this. Okay. Right, so in the general section, <coughs> this is going to be the header on the form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a new section, or a new tab, sorry, with three sections. All right, and in each each of the sections, I'm going to show you a different calculation method. All right, let's start off first by changing the name of the tab. So this is the name over here. It's currently named tab. I'm going to go change the properties, and then let's go and call this um, sample uh, calculations. Okay, and then you just click on OK. So there we go. It gives us a little bit of a... Let's go and spell it correctly. Change the properties. There we go. Great. Okay. Now, where are we are going to start off? We're going to start off with something really, really basic. So what we want to do is we want to create two fields. Uh, let's call it first number and second number. And then when I save the record, it must, cal it must multiply those two numbers by each other. Okay. So we go on to the right hand side, we're going to click on new field. Okay, so the first one we're going to call it first, first number. All right, and our logical name will create, or the schema name will create. I'm going to go to the data type and I'm going to give it a property or data type of whole number. Okay, and it's really that simple. And then instead of clicking save and close, I'm just going to go straight to save and new. So this will create the field and it'll open a blank form for me to create the second one. I'm going to call the second number, and there we go, our second field is created. Okay, and then go to the data type, we're going to give it a whole number, and then uh, the rest of the fields are fine. Okay, the last one we're going to do, so the user can enter the first number, the second number, but this, the last field is actually going to be the calculated field. So this one we're going to we're going to do one or two extra settings that actually does and, and configures the calculation logic. Okay. 
So in this one, we're going to call this one result. Right. There we go. Now I'm going to go and select whole number. And in the field type, I'm going to actually go and select calculated. All right. Now, very, very important is make sure before you click on edit that you're happy with all of the settings because some of these settings you will not be able to edit. For example, um, well, there's actually very few. The, the name of the field, this name over here, if you want to change it, you want to be able to change it now because you won't be able to change it after we click on edit. So once we click on edit, it actually creates the field and then it opens up our configuration screen to be able to configure the calculation logic. Okay. And wh while we wait for that to populate, there we go. Right, so your calculation method is made up of two things. It's made up of a condition and then an action. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the condition first. The condition I want to set in this instance is I only want it to calculate when the first number and second number fields contain data. Okay? Because obviously if, if one field only contains data, I'm multiplying nothing times nothing, and that's, that's, not, that's an illogical type of equation. So what I want to do is I want to add a condition. And the condition that I want to do is I'm going to leave the entity as the current entity, but I'm going to change the field to first number. Let me just uh, take that out, first number. And I'm going to say that I want the first number must contain data. So if on the current entity the first number contains data, I'm going to add one more condition, and I'm going to say and, that's the operator there, and, on the current entity I want the second number, this one, must also contain data. There we go. So in other words, by putting this condition here, my calculation will not run unless this condition is met. You can add additional conditions like only add active records or only add inactive records. You can play around with it. You can add, <coughs> for example, a time frame. I want to add up all the data or the totals or calculate the method based on um, a number a number of um, factors. You can kind of play around with it. All right. Okay, the action, this is the actual calculation logic. So I'm going to go and click on plus. And then I'm simply going to type first, which is the first number. Put a space, put a plus. Oh, sorry, we wanted to do multiplication, so put an asterisk. That's the multiplication sign. This is divide. This is plus. This is minus. All right, so we're going to do multiply by a second number. And there we go. Select the second number. And that's really as simple as it is. Click on the tick and then click on save and close. So our calculation logic is now set up. And on the field, we can click save and close. So now we've created the three fields. What I want to like to start off with is I'd like to start off with renaming the section. So I'm going to go click on change properties and let's give our section a title. And the title I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it multiplication and underline it. And let's spell it correctly. There we go. Great, so we've got a multiplication section, and let's save, because if you notice on the side here, my fields that I created are not here, so we need to save it. Click in your URL and press F5 to refresh. Once I refresh, my fields will show on the right-hand side. And there we go. There's the first number, drag it and drop it. And then the second number, I'm going to drag it and drop it. And then finally the result. <coughs> and there's the result. Okay. So we can save. And once it's finished saving, we're going to publish these changes. Click on Publish. Remember, your changes will not be, be exposed to the user until you've actually published. All right. Once it's finished publishing, and there we go. We can actually go back to our CRM. All right, let's do that over here. And we need to refresh. So once we refresh, what we're expecting is to we expecting to find our custom entity sitting in the sales module. Okay, so here's the sales module here. So there's sales, service, and so forth. Um, we're going to go to sales. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you will find your samples over here. There is the sample entity here. I think this is the new one we just created, samples. You can see there's some unchanged, cha uh, um, unchanged changes or unsafe changes that haven't uh, been implemented. Okay. Nevertheless, so here's our active samples. Let's click on new. We create a new record. Let's call this test number one. Okay, let's just clean that up. And then click on save. Cool. If we go to sample calculations, you'll see there's the block that we created. We can enter the first number, then enter the second number, 
if we tab out you'll see there's no result however if I click on save remember the trigger the trigger clicks on save or on load and there we go our result is then calculated you'll notice with the calculated field that the field is in a read-only state, state and cannot be edited let's go try that one more time let's go put 34 times uh, 12 and then click on save and you'll get a new result and there we go happy days okay so let's continue we're going to go back to our solution <coughs> In the next exercise, we're going to do a simple exchange rate type uh, calculation. All right, so let's get that done. Okay, so here's our form. And we're going to go and let's rename this section first. So we're going to say change properties. And let's call this one um, currency converter. Okay, so although I'm going to show you a very simple method, I'm just going to show you how to actually multiply uh, different types of fields doing in, in, in a currency converted type method. All right, so we're going to be entering a, an amount in US dollars, and we're going to convert that amount into South African rands. Okay, okay so let's help go over to the side here. We click on New Field. Okay, so we're going to start off with first the US dollar field. I'd like to keep these lowercase, the, lo the logical name. And then the data type, I'm going to go and select a decimal number. There we go. So the reason why I'm say selecting a decimal number is because my CRM has a default currency, which is South African Rand. So if I selected currency over here, then what would happen is when I enter a value, that value will show in Rands, and it could be quite confusing to users. So what I've done is I've used the field display name as USD, I've you made it a decimal number data type, so when the user looks at the field, what they are seeing is USD. Okay. Right, the field type, simple. We're not, it's not a calculated field. They're going to simply enter a value, and that's it. Okay. Then let's click on Save and Create New. Now we're going to you The next field we're going to create is the actual exchange rate. Okay, so for how many rands uh, does it take to buy one dollar, for example? Okay, let's give that a moment to create. Come on. Okay. And there we go. Our field is created. Let's now continue. And we're going to now go and put create the exchange rate field. In the exchange rate field, we're going to make this a pretty straightforward um, decimal number. So let's go select decimal and the balance of the settings are fine. Let's continue, click on save and create new field. Let's give that a second to process. Okay, fantastic. So the final field now to create is the actual um, calculation field. All right, so the final one we're going to use, let's call it answer. Um, sorry, let's call it czar. That would make more sense. So that's our prefix for South African rands. Okay, so Z-A-R, and there we go. Data type, I'm going to select currency this time. So that would prefix any number I put into this field with the rand uh, prefix. Okay, the field type, I'm going to select calculated, currency precision, I'm going to select two decimals. Okay. All our other settings, we're happy with that. The next thing to do is click on edit. So when I click on edit, what's going to happen is going to create the field and then open the dialog for me to be able to configure the calculation logic. Let's give that a moment to create and then pop up our dialog. And there we go. Well, it's not actually a dialog, sorry, it's a screen to configure the calculation logic. Again, I like to always add a condition. So on the current entity, I want to make sure that the USD field has data in it. And then click on OK. And then I'd like to make sure that the, the exchange rate also has data in. And then click on Accept. And you notice I've always put an AND condition. It means both of these conditions must be met in order for the calculation to run. Okay, adds action. So what I want to do is I want to take 
the US dollar amount and I want to multiply that by the exchange rate. There we go, there's the exchange rate. Now you'll notice that there's two fields here. This exchange rate is actually the system exchange rate and this one at the bottom is the um, is the custom one that we created. So we want to be using the actual custom one. Okay. So when the user, if we use the wrong one, what happens when we say the record, the calculation won't run because the system exchange rate doesn't actually have, at this point in time, an actual exchange rate configured. All right. Then click on the blue tick on the right, and then click on save and close. And that's it. Our field configuration is done. Okay. Now the next thing to do is to save our form. Select the URL, press F5 to refresh. Once it refreshes, we'll then be able to go and add the fields onto our actual form. And there we go. Okay, so let's go do that. We're going to put in the US dollar amount over here. We're going to put in the exchange rate. So you'll see if I, there's two over here. So if I hover over it, You'll look at the name, the display name of this one is exchange rate, and this one over here is log underscore exchange rate. So that's my custom field. And I know that because of the prefix. All right. Next thing to do is to go and put the czar. So that's the South African rand. All right. That's it. Save, and we can publish. <coughs> and there we go. Let's minimize go to our CRM and let's refresh CRM and then what we're expecting is on the form over here in our test for it to actually show there we go there's our second one now all right so let's test it out so one ra one US dollar and the exchange rate of let's say 14.50 click outside the block no calculation occurs but if I click on save and there we go. We can see we've got our first small issue here. It's not actually doing the calculation. All right. Let's click on save one more time. All right. So there's somewhere along the line here, the exchange rate is not calculating. All right. Let's go and debug that. All right. So we can go debug. Let's go over here. Let's make sure the exchange rate field that we've added is the actual correct one. So we can click on change properties. go to details we can see we've definitely added this the exchange rate over here this one is the um, the custom field we created so that's fine okay we've got our US dollar field that's perfect let's click on business rules on the top here and we can see there's no business rules in here that's fine we actually didn't even create any business rules apologies for that we, wa we what we did is we configured this czar field as a calculated field so I'm gonna click on change properties go to details there's our custom field. Click on edit. This will open the actual field itself. And then I'm going to go and click on edit over here. Let's go and check our calculation logic. There we go. All right. Now I suspect that this exchange rate field that I've used here is incorrect. So I'm going to click on it. Click on this. And I'm going to change it to a different one. Okay. So you see if you hover over them, they're both exactly the same. So we don't actually know which one is which. All right. Probably not the best example, but let's save and close. <coughs> and then save. Save and close. Click on OK. Click on Save. Click on Publish. So this time we selected the second exchange rate. So hopefully that, that should do it. All right. Let's refresh CRM. Now, because our second trigger is on load, it, if, if we have fixed the problem, it will actually run the calculation now. On load of the actual form. Let's click on sample calculation. All right. We don't have a result. Let's go and change this to two, just to test it. Click on save, and there we go. You can see now we've actually fixed the problem. All right, so let's go. $1,250 at an exchange rate of 14.5 gives us how much rands? 18,125 rand. All right, so there you've seen a basic, um, a basic method using c creating your own c currency converter. In the third example, what I'm going to do is we're going to use a nested formula. It's a little bit more complicated, but in this instance, we're going to enter a single value, which is days, and we're going to convert days into seconds.
All right. So to do that, we first have to convert one day into uh, multiply by 24 to get the hours, and then multiply that by 60, and then multiply that result by 60 to get it down to seconds. Okay. So to start off, we're going to start off by going to go open our form over here, and let's give the section a name. And we're going to call this, um, <coughs> let's give it a name. Let's call it um, days to seconds. And let's check these two boxes to make sure our heading is underlined so it looks nice and neat. And there we go. Let's go create a new field. And we're going to call this enter a number of days. Right? And then I'm going to put this as a whole number. There we go. And then simply click on Save and New. Now this one is different. We're not going to create, we're going to create one field and then one, cal one as the second field is going to be a calculated field. All right. The next one is going to be our seconds field. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to also select, in this, this instance, I'm actually going to select a decimal number. Okay, so let's select a decimal number. And the decimal precision, we'll leave it at, precision, we'll leave it at 2, but our method will use calculated. Okay, we're happy with the rest of the settings. Click on edit, which will create the field. And then the, the, the calculation configuration screen will open where we can actually go and configure it. Okay, so let's add a condition. The condition I want to add is that the enter number of days so I can take this out enter number of days contains data right then the action so the action is going to be is going to be enter the number of days and then we're going to multiply this by 24 so in other words if I had one day and you multiply that by 24 gives you 24 hours now I'm going to put brackets around it because I want to take the result of this this calculation and go take the hours and convert that into minutes. And then put brackets around this result. And now I want to go down to seconds. Multiplied by 60, that will give me seconds. Then click on the tick over here to save it. And there we go. Save and close. Okay, that's it. Save and close. And next thing to do is save our form. Click in the URL, press F5 to refresh the form so that we can get to our fields over here. There we go. Now, we need to uh, enter the number of days. Let's drag that on. And then the last one is we're going to enter the seconds field. Let's put that on there. And that's it. Save and publish. As soon as it's finished publishing, we can go and test it out. And there we go. We can minimize this, refresh our CRM, and then we'll get the new section that we just created. There we go. Let's go to sample calculations, and there's our new section. Okay, so let's enter a number of days. Before that we do that, let's actually go and find a calculator to make sure we've got our equation correct so we said one, uh, one day times 24 equals 24 hours multiply that by 60 would give you the minutes multiply this by 60 would give you how many seconds so that's the uh, number we're looking for 86,400 all right cool so let's enter the number of days one tab out and you'll see nothing happens click on save and 86,400. How many seconds are they in? 12 days. Save. And there we go. 1,036,800 seconds in 12 days. Quite cool. All right. Now, the next one, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a method where you're able to do calculations using a business rule. All right. So that's a little bit different because you'll see, although the configuration is very similar, the way it reacts and responds is very different. Okay. But one thing very important to note on calculated fields um, as well as using business rules, they will only run on the current form. In other words, I cannot take this number and go and multiply it by a value on another entity, let's say on accounts or contacts. So it'll only, it'll only run the calculation on the existing form. 
Uh, the same goes for business rules. A business rule will only execute on data that actually exists within this current entity or what they refer to in the context of this form. Okay. So let's go back to our form. And what I want to do is I want to add a new section here. Okay. So this one we're going to do a simple one. We're going to do an age calculator. But at this time I'm going to use a business rule. Now I'm not going to get into the very complex equation to actually calculate age actually right down perfectly. I'm just going to take two years, the year of birth and the, and the current year, and subtract the two together to get an approximate age. All right. So let's start off by adding and inserting a section. Okay. Then let's forget, change the name of our section. Click on Change Properties. <coughs> and we want to go and give it a decent name. Or an appropriate name. Let's go and call it Age, age Calculator. Again, let's underline it. So it looks nice and neat. And then we can go and create the fields. All right. So start off with the first first field. This is going to be the current year. There we go. And let's make it a whole number. Okay. And then save a new. And then we're going to put year of birth. Okay. Also whole number. Okay, and save and new. Next, we're going to put approximate age. And I'm also going to make this a whole number, but I'm not going to make it a calculated field. Click and save and close. There we go. Now I'm going to save my form. <coughs> Select the URL, press F5 so I can get my fields on this side. Scroll down, and let's go and drag the approximate age. We want the current year. There's the current year. We'll put that on top. And then we want to click to so get the year of birth. Let's end, drag and drop the year of birth there. Click on Save. Okay. So now we're actually ready to configure the business rule. So go into your command bar on the top. Click on Business Rules. You'll notice this section goes to Read Only, and on the right-hand side, the business rule uh, list will open. In the bottom, you click on New Business Rule. Okay, so now that our Business Rule pane is open, we can click on the drop-down, and let's give it a name. Let's call it uh, Calculate Age. Okay, and then we can minimize that. You'll see the name won't change immediately on the top here. That's because I just I haven't saved it yet. We always got to start off with a condition first. So the condition we're going to set for this is going to be that the current year as well as the year of birth contains data. All right. So we can go down here to the entity, and we're going to put current year, operator, contains data, and apply. Okay. We're going to add another one, a second condition. So you, uh, I click on this new over here to add a second condition. And then I'm going to say, so we've put in current year, and I want to put in year of birth, right? There we go. And then the operator, I'm going to select contains data and click on apply. You'll notice I've left the rule logic as and. So if you read the rule, it says if the current year contains data and year of birth contains data, then now it must do something. Okay. So let's look at this condition. You'll see there's an X over here and there's a tick over here. So what that means is, is if the condition is met, do this. If the condition is not met, then go this way. Okay. So I'm going to go to my components. And I'm going to go and drag this one here called set field value. So let's drag that on and put it on top of the plus. There we go. So if <coughs> this condition is met, then it'll execute the calculation method we're going to do now. Okay, so the first thing to do is to set. Which field are we going to set? We're going to go and set the approximate age. Right? The type, we're going to select formula. And then we we'll select the first field. The first field is going to be the current year. And then we're going to select the operator as minus. Then we're going to select a field. And then we're going to select the year of birth. All right. So let's look at what that looks like. We're going to say the approximate age. I want you to populate the approximate age with the result of the following formula, the current year minus the year of birth, and click on Apply. And then you'll see it says set approximate age to current year minus year of birth. And that's it. Let's click on save. 
Okay, now that that's done, it's busy refreshing. Let's wait for that to finish. And then we can change our scope to Entity and go and click on Activate. And then the confirmation screen will come up. Click on Activate. The difference with the business rule is when you create a business rule, the business rule activates immediately. So you don't actually need to publish it. A business rule is not in a published or unpublished state. It is either in a draft, sta a draft state, which means you're busy configuring it, or it's in an activated state. All right. We can actually close that now. Let's click on Save. And let's click on Publish. <coughs> There's one more business rule I want to create to clean it up a little bit. But we're not going to do that right now. And I first want to demonstrate to you what it actually looks like. Okay, so let's go and refresh. Okay, there we go. Let's refresh. Let's go to our sample calculations, scroll down, and then we'll see our age calculator. So let's go and put in um, the current year, so 2019, minus year of birth, 1980, and then click outside the block, and you'll see the age will immediately calculate. However, in this instance, you'll notice that this age, approximate age, is actually still editable. So you'd need to change some field properties there. All right, let's go try that one more time. To current year, to the 2019, the year of birth. Did you notice when I tabbed out the calculation or ran again? Which is correct. So business rule will, will continuously run every time you tab out of one of these two fields. It's going to put 1995, and there we go, 24 years old. All right. However, You'll notice if I take this out and I tab out, the total doesn't remove. And if I take this out and I tab out, the total still doesn't remove. So what I want to do is I want to put in a rule that says if either of these are empty, then set the age to zero. All right. Let's go see how we do that. I'm going to create one more new business rule on the form. <coughs> there we go. And we're going to call this... Let's call it clear age. Okay. And then we're going to set a new condition here. We're going to say if the uh, current year does not contain data, right, add another condition. And we're going to say the year of birth does not contain data, but I'm going to change the rule logic to an or condition. And let's click on apply. So if you read it, it says current year does not contain data or the year of birth does not contain data, then do something. Okay. So we're going to go set field value. And then I'm going to go and pick the field. The field that I'm looking for is the approximate age. And then under the type, I'm going to set it to type clear. Right. And click on apply. So if this condition is met, then it'll clear the approximate age field. Let's click on save and change my scope over here to entity and click on activate so the scoping actually depend what, what, the, what how the scoping basically works is is I can set the scope to a specific form or I can set it to entity so the difference basically means is that it's the scope of where this business rule will run so if I if I activate this on a specific form then this business rule will only run on that form if I set it to entity it will run across all forms wherever these fields are basically used all right Cool, so we're done with that. And we can minimize here and let's go test drive our system, our new logic. Okay. And scroll down. Let's get rid of this on top here. And you'll see they're all empty. Okay, so let's put in the current year. Right, and you notice no calculation. Let's put 1980. Tab out. It gives us 39 years old. Let's go take out the year of birth tab out and there it clears it let's try the other one so let's go put 1985 back in here it'll calculate let's remove the current year and then tab out and you'll see it will remove the approximate age okay so that's the difference of using a business rule to do calculations opposed to using an actual calculated field the major differences calculated fields will only calculate on save or on load whereas a business rule calculation will calculate immediately once you tab out of that field. However, 
complex calculation is only possible with calculated fields where the business rules currently at this stage can only do simple equations. Okay, cool stuff. All right, so now that's it for the basics of doing uh, calculated fields. Let's move on to roll-up fields. All right, so for roll-ups, what we need is we need two entities. Okay, so we're going to have a parent entity as well as a child entity. Okay, so let's going to go to our solutions. Right, I'm just going to get rid of this for now. Let's go make sure we're all set up and ready to go. I'm just going to save and close on that. And this is our solution. I'm going to save and close on this. So I like to do a publish, a final publish of everything before I actually go ahead and continue so that I know that everything that I'm working on is 100% correct and the latest uh, publishing is all being done. Okay, we can close that. Okay, let me just close that screen over there. Okay, and there we go. I'm going to go to my advanced configuration, or advanced settings. Okay, it wants me to sign in again. Let's just do that. Okay. All right, let's get going. So I'm going to go down to my solutions. And I'm going to do one more final publish of everything just to make sure my system is 100% updated. And to do that, we can go click over here, click on Publish All Customizations. I'm going to pause the video just for a second because this public publishing this method takes my, uh, quite a bit longer. Okay, there we go. Our publishing is finished. Let's go and open our solution now. There's my solution I created for this video. Let's open that up. And let's click over here. We've got our calculation samples. All right, so now, in the, f in the presentation earlier, what we discussed is we want to be able to add child records and connect the two together and then go and add the total up to the parent record. So to do that, we're going to first start off by creating a new entity. And I'm going to create one called Timesheets. Okay, so let's call it Timesheet. There we go. Plural name, Timesheets. Great. Where do we want it to appear? Under Sales. All right. Then one more thing I want to do is I want to give it the, the ability to allow Quick Create. So that means when I'm inside my sample sheet, I'm able to quickly create with a pop-up form. It actually pops out from this, the, the right side of the screen that allows me to quickly create time entries. Okay. Again, on the primary field, I'm going to go and set this to Description. So Description. And the name, I'm going to call it Time sheet underscore description okay there we go so the reason why I name it like that is because I can see it's the timesheet description so the logical name gives me the full description of which entity I'm referring to and which description it is okay I'm gonna click on save and then the entity will create once the entity creates we can actually start with the rest of our configuration Okay, we've got a small error here. Let's just click on OK. It's telling us that we've got a, um, a duplication. Okay, let's go and see what that problem basically is. Okay, timesheets. That should be fine. I suspect that this logical name is possibly the problem. Uh, no, it won't be the problem. Okay. There we go. We don't have any issues here. We'll change this to name. That should be fine. We shouldn't. Let's try that one more time. Let's click on save. And we've still got an error that's showing over here. Okay, no problem. Let's go and fix that error. Okay, we're ready to continue. I found the problem in the previous lesson. I created an entity that I removed from the solution but didn't remove it. I removed it from my custom solution but not actually the main, um, the main solu solu uh, CRMA itself, the, the default solution. Okay, but it's sorted out now and we have our timesheet and we have our calculation samples. All right, so let's start off by going into our timesheet form. Let's go and we're going to go and create a quick create form. All right, so we're going to click on new and we're going to click on 
uh, quick create this form over here so this is going to create a quick create form right and let's give it a name so so that it doesn't say tab over there let's click on change we're going to say timesheet entry okay and then there we go click on okay that's it so we've got a name over there perfect next thing to do we want to go and now create our set of fields so we already have the description of work which is great and all we need to do now is put in the number of hours so let's create a field for hours let's go create a new field and i'm going to give it a name so i'm going to call this hours right and there we go i'm going to change this to lowercase make that hours all right then the, the decimal number type. Now, because we're creating a roll-up field, or we're going to be rolling up this data, we need to be very careful. Because with a roll-up field, you can only roll up the same data type. So in other words, if I create this as a whole number field or a currency field, that means the field that's rolling up on the parent record also needs to be of the same, uh, same type. So in this instance, I'm going to make this a decimal number so that I can put uh, fractional hours, and then I'm going to put it as a simple field with a precision of two so that's two decimal places all right then i'm going to click on save and close that will go and create the field all right the next thing i would like to do is click on save and then select my url press f5 to refresh the page so that i can get my field over here okay let's give that a second to refresh and there we go i can go take my hours drag and drop my hours in here my description of work and save and publish the form and there we go i can publish it okay so now that that's done we've got, got our quick create form we can close that there's one or two more small changes that i'd like to make is that's actually on the views right and you'll see why just now wh why i'm actually making these changes there's two views in particular i want to change i want to change the active timesheet entries that's the active views and i want to change the associated view these two so let's go and click on it. So what I'm actually changing here is how the, the records actually render. So I want the created on, the description of work, and then I want to add the, t the hours that was logged. So we're going to go and click on add columns, and let's go and add those hours. There we go. And select hours, and click on OK, and save and close. Then go to the associated view. Select description of work, click on add columns, add hours, and click on OK, and save and close. That's it. All right. So now we're going to go to the parent entity. And what we're going to do is we're going to create something called a grid. So a grid, what that does, it allows me to expose timesheet entries inside the main form on the calculation sample. So let's go and see how we do that. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down. Let's make it the full screen. And I'm going to select this tab. There we go. Select the tab, and I'm going to click on Insert, and I'm going to insert one tab. There we go. And let's give it a name. So I'm going to call this again Timesheet Entries. So Time Sheet Entries. All right. There we go. And then over here in our Timesheet Entries, we're not going to add fields because we're going to add a grid. So we're going to click on Insert, and we're going to click on Subgrid. And then we're going to go and give it a name. I'm going to call it Time Entries. And you'll notice that the name that I'm giving it is actually a single word with no spaces. That's because it's a logical name. It's not the actual display name. All right. Then I want to select the records to display. Do I only want to re display related records or all records? So I'll explain what the difference is. If I select only related records, that means it'll only show me records related to this calculation sample entity. If I select all records, then obviously when I'm in this record, it will show me all time entries across all records, which is not what I want. So I want to show only related records. Then the entity. So I need to pick which entity it must expose. Right, only related records, that's correct. And the related entity. And you can see over here our related entity is actually not showing because it's not actually published. So I'm just going to click on cancel. And then I'm going to save this and publish over here. 
<coughs> and there's one other reason why it's not showing, and that is actually the main reason. The main reason is, is we actually haven't created a relationship between the actual, uh, um, how can you say, the sample, a parent record, as well as the child. So we need to go create that relationship first. So I'm going to close this form. I'm going to go here to my fields, and I'm going to create a relationship. So the relationship is the connection between these two entities. Let's click on New. And I'm going to call this Parent. Okay. And then I'm going to give it a data type of Lookup. And where is it going to look up to? It's going to look up to the calculation sample. So that's the, con the connection. I also like to change the relationship name. All right. So why I like to change it is I like to give it something that... Um, is more descriptive of what I'm doing. All right, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for timesheets, looking up to the calculation sample, and then I put ID on the end to indicate that this is a lookup. All right, and that's it, save and close. Now that the lookup is created, I'm going to go add this lookup onto the actual field. Oh, there's one more thing that I wanted to change on this lookup, a little trick you'll learn. All right, so with regards to the lookup, what I want to do is I want to actually make this lookup to the parent, I want to make it business required. So if I do this, what actually happens is when I click on the quick create form, all the record, all the fields that are business required will automatically populate, especially for those fields that are um, lookup fields. All right, save and close. There we go. Let's go on to our, uh, so now we've created the relationship. If we go back to the form now, we'll actually be able to add that grid in the in the calculation sample entity there we go let's click on information scroll down go to our grid over here click on insert click on subgrid okay now let's see only related records from timesheet the parent okay and then i want to only see active records now remember previously we went to go to the views and we actually went and configured how that view displayed and that's where we, why we actually changed it over there and, uh, and added the additional fields. Last thing, I need to give it the name, so time, entries, and then click on OK. And there we go, our grid's in. OK, the last thing I want to do is I want to I want to change the display height. So remember, with a grid, it shows a number of records. So I can configure how many records I wanted to show by default, so five or ten records. I can also configure that I want the height to auto adjust based on the number of records. So to do that, select it, then click on the Home tab, click on Change Properties. Okay, then I go to Formatting, and then you'll see at the bottom here it says uh, Row Layout. So I'm going to change this to 5, so that means it'll show up to five entries, and once I put the sixth entry, it'll give me pages one to two, and, and then I can scroll between the pages. I also have the option to check this box over here, and if I check this, what it'll do, it'll show me five rows by default, which will keep my, my um, uh, section of my grid uh, a decent height, and then as soon as it gets past five entries, it'll actually automatically start expanding. In this case, I don't want to do that. Let's click on OK. Let's click on Save, and let's click on Publish. Now that it's published, let's go save and close. We can go back to our CRM and then refresh. Let's go see how that looks. Okay. So we're on the calculation sample. You can see there's our sam sample calculations that we did. And there you'll see over here the time entries. There's the time entries grid. All right. Now we can go and add one. So click on the plus. Now because we, we created a quick create form, if we didn't create a quick create form, when I click on plus, a new form will pop up, okay? But because I created a quick create form, if I click on plus, it'll slide out from the right right hand side. So click on plus, and there we go. Now you'll see my fields are missing here. Okay, so let's go fix that. All right, so to fix that, we're going to go and open up our configuration on our timesheet entry. There we go. Go to our forms. Let's go to the quick create form. That is going to be, uh, we've actually got two here, and this is because I actually um, mistakenly did not 
correctly remove the solution from a previous day's lesson. And there we go. Okay, so we've got our description and our hours, and we want to add in the parent. I want to add in the parent there and click on save and publish. And there we go. Well, as soon as that's finished publishing, we can go and then close that down and go back to CRM and let's refresh and see if our changes have taken effect the way we want them to. <coughs> go to our timesheets, click on plus. And there we go. You'll see, because I made it mandatory, this field automatically populated. Had I not made this mandatory, it wouldn't have populated. The advantage of making it mandatory as well is that when this populates, it connects it to the correct record. So there's no way the user can make a mistake and connect it to the wrong record. Okay, description. Let's say CRM training. And number of hours, let's say two hours, and click on save and close. And there we go. You see it enters the date the entry was created on the description of work, and the number of hours. Okay, fantastic. Let's add one more entry. And let's give it um, customization training. Number of hours, one, and save and close. And now we've got two records. Perfect. Okay. What we want, though, however, is when we go to the general tab, I want to put a field over here. And what that field must do is it must add up this two plus this one and then represent a total over here. All right, so let's go and let's go and see how we do that. And to do that, we're going to use something called a roll-up field. All right. So let's go back to our configuration, and we're going to go and create the roll-up field on the parent record. So let's go to forms. Just wait for that to load. Okay, <coughs> let's open our main form. Okay, great stuff. And then in the general tab, we want to place the field over here. Okay. So we're going to go create new field. And let's call this total hours worked. Okay. There we go. We can neaten this up. Total hours um, worked. Great. There we go. And now our data type, we're going to give this, remember our... Hours is a decimal number, so the roll-up field must be a decimal number as well. Okay. And then field type is a roll-up. Our precision is 2. And then just click on edit. Once we click on edit, the field will create. And then our screen will pop up to actually configure that roll-up. All right. Important to note about roll-up fields is they do only calculate once every 12 hours. However, you do have an option to invoke the roll-up on demand, which that means... What that basically means is I can click on a button and it'll quickly do the calculation. All right. Okay, so related entity. These are your settings. So do I want to add a related entity? So from the parent record, which is the calculation sample record or s calculation sample entity, do I want it to go and calculate to a related entity? So the answer is yes. So I'm going to go add related entity. And then it automatically brings up related entity timesheet. Now the reason why brought this up is because there is actually only one relationship so if there was more than one relationship if I click on the drop down it will give me a list so I click on select the time entries and click on OK I can add some filters there as well so if I want to um, filter conditions so for example I want it only time sheet entries for this week this month this year or for example um, greater than a certain value or between a certain period or for a certain amount of hours or above a certain amount of hours I can actually define those filters over there Okay, so then the aggregation. The aggregation, in simple terms, means what do, what do I want to do with the data? So what I want to do is click on that. I want to sum, which is to add, and then it's giving me hours. Now, if it doesn't show hours over here, it means that your field data types are wrong or mismatching. Okay, so if, for example, I had created the total field and I made that total a whole number, it wouldn't allow me to select hours because hours is of a... Um, a data type of decimal number. All right. Click on OK. And then click on Save and Close. Great. So we've created our roll-up field. And let's go Save and Close. And let's go and add it over here. To add it, we're going to save our form. Uh, select the URL. Click on F5. OK. Then let's go find our 
total hours worked. Let's drag it across. And there we go. Drop it in over there. And then we're going to click on Save and Publish. And that's it. We've created a roll-up field now. We've created a two different multiplication methods. We've created a, a nested formula. We've inserted a grid. And we've got our roll-up field. Let's go and test it out. Okay. Minimize here. Let's refresh our CRM. I'm expecting the field to show up on this form over here. And there we go. Now you will see immediately the value is no it has no it has no value, and for the last update it has no value. So it's actually waiting for 24 hours later before it actually calculates this. Let's go and have a look at our timesheet entries. We've got two hours and one hour. All right. So how do I invoke this calculation immediately? So click on General. See the little calculator. If you click on it, it'll give me this recalculate button. Click on the recalculate. And there it gives me the three hours, and it puts a time and date stamp of when last the calculation occurred. Okay, fantastic. So that's how the roll-up fields work. From time to time, you may need this roll-up field to calculate immediately because you have other things or other data within your records that are dependent on it. However, you cannot, with standard functionality, go and enforce or invoke this workflow to, run, to calculate the total number of hours worked <coughs> immediately. And we have a special trick, uh, which I'm going to share with you, which is a, a solution. I found that what it does is I can on demand go and force this roll up to happen immediately without the user having to actually click on the recalculate button. All right. So this is the final part of our lesson. So I'm going to show you now how to force roll ups using a custom solution. All right. So let's go over here. And then you'll see on the top here, I've installed this solution called Workflow Dynamics 365 Workflow Tools. Uh, you'll be able to down this download this from the Logix 365 um, learning portal and then uh, install that into your solution. So it'll work on any uh, all current versions of Dynamics 365 version 9 and above. Okay. Cool. So let's go do that. Let's go and open up our uh, configuration here. The first thing I need to do is I actually need to go and get the name of this field. So click on the select the field, and I'm going to click on change properties. So you'll see why I need this name now. Okay, I'm going to, I need to actually get the name so that I can invoke the roller. So I'm just going to click on Control Copy to copy that field. Control C, and then click on OK. And I'm going to close this down because I won't need it again. Right, and then I'm going to go to my my solution here. And I'm going to use a workflow. So what I'm going to do is on create of the timesheet entry, I want to go up to the parent and force the roll up. All right. So we're going to go to processes. All right. Create a new process. We're going to call this um, force roll up onto the calculation. Um, sample sheet give it a category of workflow and the entity is going to be timesheet okay so why am I selecting timesheet over here the reason being is I want this workflow to trigger every time a timesheet entry is created okay and that makes sense right and then click on okay now my workflow configuration opens and then we're simply going to add a step so our conditions we've got over here is all correct. And we want it to trigger when a record is created. So we leave that checked. We go down here, we say add step. And I've already installed the solution. And this is the solution over here. This MS uh, D Wines CRM workflow tools. Click on that. And then look over here for calculate roll up field. And click on that. There's some quite cool tools here if you play around with this tool. We can click on set properties. And then that field that I, that I copied, I'm going to paste it in here. So that's the field name. Then in the, in the parent record URL, I need to go and find the parent record. So there it is there, parent calculation sample. And then I'm going to look for something called record URL dynamic. So there it is there, record URL dynamic. Click on add, select it, and click on OK. And you can actually see I added it in the wrong place. I just want to delete that. Okay, let's try that again. 
parent record and then record URL dynamic click on OK I'm going to select that make sure I'm placing in the right place this time and there we go and save and close all right next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and convert this to a real-time workflow because what I want is I want the instant this record is created it must go and execute this workflow immediately so on the top click on convert to real-time workflow I must mention though that this is not best practice you only use the convert to real-time workflow if it's absolutely necessary and there's no other way you need this calculation to happen immediately um, then you can go and convert it to a real-time workflow I do suggest that you don't abuse converting it to a, a real-time workflow because if your system is really really busy what it can do is it can continuously force your asynchronous process further and further back in the queue because your real-time workflows are taking precedence over it okay and it creates a lot of load once you're happy just activate the workflow and click on activate and that's it so now what we can do we can go and test it out and let's close that um, we can save here minimize Let's go refresh CRM. So remember, the workflow will trigger on create. All right, so we can see we've currently got three hours here. Let's go to our timesheet entries. And we're going to go and create. So we've got three hours. Let's create another one for two hours. Let's call it um, roll-up training. Okay, let's maybe fix the spelling there. Roll-up training. And let's add another two hours. And click on save and close. I click on save and close, it creates the record, I get a little confirmation pop up over there. But if I go over to general, you'll notice that it still says 3. And the reason why it says 3 is because my screen actually hasn't refreshed. So although the record has already finished calculating, I need to still refresh the screen. So if I click on refresh, you'll see it'll come up with a total of 5 hours. Okay, so this calculation happened instantly so that I'm able to get... Uh, real-time calculations that are correct so that if there's other fields that are dependent on the total then definitely um, I'll have the right values okay let's go try that one more time click on add new timesheet entry and completed training and let's put five hours save and close and there we go go to our general it hasn't updated refresh and you'll see we'll get the correct figure in there okay so the reason why i used a, f a forced roll up here is because otherwise i'd have to wait 12 hours for this calculation to actually take place using a forced roll up allows me to calculate that immediately all right just to recap uh sample calculations over here we've done a multiplication we've multiplied two fields and then used a normal um uh, calculated field to, mu to multiply two whole numbers over here we've used a decimal number, we've used a decimal number and a currency field and we've done exactly the same, we've just multiplied them with each other. The days to seconds we've used a nested formula to convert the number of days into seconds and in, in this case we used a whole number here and a decimal number there. All right. The age calculator, we subtracted two years from each other to get an approximate age, pretty straightforward. We went and created a new grid. Um, called time entries where we've gone exposing related records within a grid um, and that's how that shows up and then we've gone and created a roll-up field to add those totals and then on top of that we went and used a, a, a solution that forces this roll-up to happen immediately all right so on the uh, logics 365 learning portal you'll be I'll, I will put the the solution there for you to be able to download and uh, yeah happy CRM CRMing and I'll see you on the day 13 learning. Thank you so much for watching.